that happen anyway? Damien did it with his brain. My man, Damien! We'll begin this video with a question for you mighty fine folks. Have you ever gotten into collecting? Whether it's movies on physical media like myself, toys, action figures, comic books, records, or something that has sentimental meaning to just you. Let me know in the comments because collecting is the main theme of this Futurama episode. Cuteness Overload is an Amy-centric storyline which was originally called Cuteness Overlord when the titles leaked several months ago, just to clear up any confusion. But yes, giving us an Amy-centric storyline, this one hits several cliches that you can often associate with Futurama, particularly giving something seemingly adorable a dark twist. And having said that, I really like the way this story explores a topic that I think many can relate to. And collecting is a fun hobby where you can appreciate the time it takes to complete a set of something. There's fun in the hunt, and the feeling of completion once you've achieved your goal is a rush in of itself. But what comes after that? And with collecting, is enough ever really enough? At what point does it become an unhealthy addiction where you're essentially hoarding? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I do like how this story explores a darker side of collecting, a metaphorical black hole that Amy does fall victim to. And there's a prominent focus on her behavioural changes in particular, and how an innocent hobby can very quickly become an addiction. And Amy herself has changed quite a lot over the series. Beginning as a sweet, rich, but clumsy university student back in season one, the writers have both enhanced and removed some of her likeable traits. For example, she's extremely intelligent, but only when the plot demands it, which is kind of backhanded in my opinion. And when it comes to money, she is very spoiled because of her family's wealth, which does influence her more careless behaviour. But props to the writers of the Hulu era, because they managed to shake things up, making her a mother to three children. She has a lot to learn about parenthood, but ultimately, this does enhance her character. Beginning with a brutally accurate look at parenthood, it was great to see this episode take its time to further develop the children as characters. And at first they are portrayed as ungrateful and spoiled, literally given everything they could possibly want, and with that, Leela suggests that the crew should take a trip to the orphanarium that she grew up in, therefore giving Amy's children a first-hand look at what it's like to be less fortunate. And with this, hopefully, they will learn a lesson that will improve their behaviour at home. And like many episodes before it, the scenes that take place in the orphanarium are full of dark humour. It's also great to see so many familiar faces with the orphans, often having some very memorable one-liners. And what's funny about Amy's plan is how it backfires. Mandy befriends the little girl Sally, and they bond over some cute stuffed animals covered in sauce stains. But instead of being disgusted by the orphans and their living conditions, Mandy is jealous, and I found it hilarious how upset she was getting over this. The sequence is then brought to an abrupt end where Amy snatches her children away, which was pretty brutal. To make up for upsetting Mandy, she agrees to buy her a brand new stuffed animal, but is surprised to see so many adults buying and enjoying them instead. It's then revealed that they are sought after as a toy line called Fuzzy Fun Bags, basically in a strange take on Beanie Babies or Funko Pops, where people go crazy trying to collect them all. Gotta collect them all! One of my favourite side characters, Randy, makes an appearance as a fellow collector who provides more exposition on the toy line. There's apparently 200 to collect, and I find it funny how Amy is only interested in collecting these things because they're valuable. Gotta collect them all. And you'd be surprised how often that is the reason behind people getting into collecting as a sort of money-making hustle, and it even becomes newsworthy that fuzzy fun bags have reached an all-time high in value, projected to go up even further, and of course, Amy is all over this. I have mentioned it before in previous reviews, but I love how the animators are referencing extremely niche parts of the series in these new episodes. With Amy's collection of fuzzy fun bags growing, she's literally buying them from all over the place. Yard sales, backstreet deals, and even a convention where she's dressed in her marmoset pajamas. But like many collectors, there's the search for the last piece to complete the set. And for Amy, it's a character called the Cashew Cuddlefish. And this appears to be the rarest because literally nobody has it for sale. Even when Planet Express becomes inundated with delivering these stuffed animals, she cannot find one amongst the crates of stock. 
And at this point, Amy is losing her mind trying to find the last one, but why does she care so much about them? Ooh, lecture! Lecture! Giving us a more informal, scientific lecture, Professor Farnsworth explains the science behind cuteness, which gives more credit to it being weaponized for the sake of profit. And this also involves a cuteness experiment, and I love how Bart Simpson makes an unexpected visual cameo in this scene. Further illustrating how addictive tendencies change our behaviour, Amy cannot look beyond at the cuteness of the fun bags, even ditching her own children in favour of obtaining the last one. And when a cashew cuttlefish does go up for auction, she is intent on buying it. But it's then revealed to be a fake, and I love how Ben Beeler, a relatively unknown side character, has so much usage across the reboot, particularly in these scenes. Remember, Miss Wong, you have actual kids to hug! Who? Reality hits Amy when she's reminded of her responsibilities, being a parent. And I suppose this is reflective of just how far gone she is. And when she returns to the orphanage to pick up her children, she's immediately drawn back into collecting the fun bags. In a big reveal of sorts, Mandy is playing with her new friend, who unexpectedly has the cashew cuttlefish. And it's a well-loved toy covered in dirt, but that won't stop Amy from collecting it, and I both love and hate this sequence, because it's such an uncomfortable moment, but it's incredibly well acted by Lauren Tom, who voices Amy, who does such a terrific job making her voice deliberately condescending towards Sally. What an interesting little toy. Amy succeeds in manipulating the little girl to get the cuttlefish. How far will she go to collect them all? Rock bottom, apparently. Literally taking a child's beloved stuffed animal. And what's even more heartbreaking about this scene is Sally saying, you can have it if you want, showing how selfless she is and that she doesn't care about the toys being collectible or rare. And I'd say this highlights just how out of touch Amy is, becoming monstrous towards young children. Collecting really has changed her. And converging the plot lines, I like seeing Zap Brannigan and Kiff Croker on assignment. Their awkward polarizing chemistry makes for some hilarious writing. And this sequence is no exception. Exploring a dupe outpost, they find the entire crew has been killed. It's as if they had their very lives cuddled out of them. But what could have caused this? Well, in a horrific child's play-like twist, the fun bags are revealed to be alive. Kinda predictable, but I like how they explain this, where each fun bag contains little beans, which act as reproductive spores, replicating themselves to make for a more successful invasion. And people are literally bringing them into their homes willingly because they are so cute, including Amy, who feels terrible about taking the rare toy from Sally. She returns to the orphanage, giving back the stuffed animals, but this is where the cuttlefish reveals itself as the Alpha Thumbbag. And it's in control of all the thumbbags, and really cracked me up when it started speaking. Genuinely horrifying. Let's cuddle! <laughs> Ganging up on the orphans, this leads to a final conflict where Zap Brannigan shows up to save the day, but instead makes things worse. And like the professor said, the beans inside each doll allow them to reproduce, increasing their numbers, but in another somewhat predictable twist, killing the alpha thumbbag will stop the cute killers in their tracks. But they're just so adorable, how could you kill something so cute? Even the Planet Express crew struggles to do this. The cuteness is too much, even for me! And I believe Bambi's mother deserved it! Luckily, the children have a bright idea, cuddling at the cuddlefish until it bursts, stopping the toys in their tracks, and I found it amusing how the cuddlefish reproduced, making more inanimate stuffed animals of itself. Being extremely rare, it's thought they can sell the duplicate cuddlefish toys for profit, but the thumbbag fad dies with the thumbbags themselves, as their value plummets to an all-time low, and I love the final shot of the episode, seeing them piled up in a landfill, which feels like the harsh reality for most collectible fads that just don't stand the test of time. They become worthless, pushed aside for the next piece of tat that takes the consumers by storm. As you can probably tell, I had a lot of fun with this episode. If you've ever gotten into collecting, I think this one will definitely resonate with you. It was great to see an Amy-themed episode that also focused on her children being relatively new characters, and it was an interesting take on the whole collectible becoming an addiction. 
Anyway, that's going to do it for this review slash breakdown looking at Cuteness Overload. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode. As always, I love hearing your thoughts and opinions. And for more content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me? <laughs>